In this video, we're going to take a look at exponential word problems, and in particular, growth and decay problems. Let's jump right in by taking a look at a sample problem. Star Wars action figure bought on eBay for $20 in 2010 has increased in value 12% each year. What was it worth in 2015? So if we wanted to solve this, one thing we could do is set up a table. And we know in 2010, we start at $20. Then we'd have to figure out if it increases 12%, what's 12% of 20? And here you would need to remember that if we want to find out what 12% of 20 is, we actually have to turn 12% into a decimal. So we could go 12% times 20, which gives us 2.4. Now the value in 2011 is obviously not 2.4. You have to add that 12% increase to the original $20. So in 2011, it would be worth 22.40. Now, you don't get to add $2.40 every year because what's happening is each year it's increasing 12% based on its value at the start of that year. So the next thing we'd have to do is find out 12% of 2240, because that's how much it would increase between 2011 and 2012. So if we calculate that, we get 2.688. Now, since this is a money problem, I would turn that into $2.69. For most money problems, it makes sense to just round it to the nearest penny. So when I add that to 2240, I end up with $25.09. And then I would just have to keep doing this process, which this is kind of taking a long time. I know there's only three more answers to find, but it's kind of a long process. So how can we make this a little faster? So one way to make it a little faster so that we don't have to take our amount of increase and add it to the original amount, but if I want to know the final value at the end of that, I need like 112%. So if I multiply 1.12 times 25.09, that will actually give me the value in 2013. I get $28 and 10 cents when I round it to the nearest penny. So I could go ahead and continue to just multiply by 1.12, and that would lead to my final answer. $35.25. That's a lot of calculations to come up with just one answer that we want. There has to be an easier way, and there is. Some of you guys might notice this pattern here. To get from one value to the next, we are just multiplying by 1.12 each time. That means this is an exponential pattern. And there's a formula we can use with exponents that could take us right to our answer at 2015. So let's stop now and take a look at what are the formulas we can use for exponential word problems. So we're going to take a look at a couple different ways people like to represent exponential word problems with formulas. My advice is watch the whole slide and then at the end hit pause and write down the one that you like best. So one way you can show exponential word problems would be y equals a times m to the x. And in this equation, y is your final amount, the answer that you're looking for. The A would be your initial amount, sometimes called the initial value, or your starting point. X would be the amount of time. And M is your multiplier. Now, how do you get your multiplier? Your multiplier, if it's growth, can be 1 plus R, whereas if it's decay or something that's going down, it can be 1 minus R. And R is your rate, or the percent that has to be converted to decimal form before you add or subtract it to one. So that's one version that you'll see with exponential word problems. Another version would be v of t equals 
a times m times t. So some slight differences here. One thing is this is written as a function. This is probably my favorite way to show it because I, I think of v as standing for value and v of t is value over time, which is the final amount in the first one. We still use a and we still use m, but then instead of x for, for the amount of time, you can just use t for the amount of time. So this is another common way that exponential word problems are written. The last way I'm going to show you would be this. And the only difference here is they used a capital A, but notice instead of writing M for multiplier, there's the 1 plus R. So this one would be used for growth, or you could use this one if you have decay. And notice that instead of putting an M for multiplier, they just go straight to what we use to find the multiplier. So there's probably a few other ways that people represent it using different variables other than the ones you see here. They all work, so it's your choice. What do you like? The one nice thing about setting it up as a function is that if I want to know the value in like five years time, then I could use v of five to stand for find the value in five years. So go ahead and pause the video and take some notes which one you would like to use. So now we're back at the problem that we solved before we used this formula. So let me start by just erasing my work here. And now I can go ahead and use a formula to go straight to my answer in 2015. So I'm going to use b of t equals a times m to the t power. So let's substitute in the numbers that I need. So I need to know my time from 2010 to 2015. That's five years. So I'm looking for v of five. My starting amount is $20. And my multiplier, this is the one where there's a couple different ways you can come up with the multiplier. We already know what the multiplier is. It's 1.12. So how do you come up with that? We know from our formula page that you could think of it as 12% converts to 12 hundredths as a decimal. And then you can just simply go 1 plus plus. 12 hundredths gives you your multiplier. But it's not really the way I like to do it. I want to always realize that we start at 100%. When I read the word problem, I want to be thinking, are we adding or subtracting to 100%? Is this value going up or down? This one is increasing in value. So in my mind, what I do to get my multiplier is I think 100% plus 12%. That is 112%. And then I go ahead and convert my 112% into the decimal. Now, how do I convert it into the decimal? There's a couple ways to do this. One way is to go ahead and take 112 and divide it by 100. That will change a percent into a decimal. Another way is to know that the decimal moves two spaces to the left. The way that I like to do it, though, is I like to think of it as the word percent can be thought of as per cent. And a cent is pennies. So what I like to do is look at that 112% and think of that as that's 112 pennies. Now, how do I write 112 pennies on a price tag? And that would be 1.12. So in my mind, that's how I figure out my multiplier of 1.12. And then our time we know is 5. So there's our equation that we can use to get our final answer. And now let me erase again to give us more space. So now all we'd have to do is know what to do to put this into a calculator to get our answer. So we know it's going to be dollars. So how do you do this in the calculator? So first off, just to be safe, I want to calculate this part first, because I know that I need to get that before I multiply by 20. And so you put in the 1.12 into your calculator, and then depending on your calculator, I've seen maybe three different keys that allow you to make an exponent. And here they are. So your calculator should have one of those three options. And what you do is you type in 
1.12, and then hit the button that you have, hit 5, hit equals, and now go times 20. And that will lead to your answer. So let me go ahead and do this and see what I come up with. So 1.12 to the fifth power, when I hit equal, so that gives you 1.7623, and the numbers keep continuing. That's the answer it gives you on the calculator. You want to keep that answer on your calculator and multiply it by 20. You don't want to round that number to two or three decimals because then your answer won't be as accurate. So then when I just go times 20, I get my final answer of 35.246, which would round up to 25. So in this case, I got the same answer as I did with the long route when I rounded my answer at the end of a couple of those years. So there you go. That is solving an exponential word problem. All right. If you're feeling confident, you can go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. But watch out for that 0.5 that's part of the percent. All right. So if I'm going to solve this one, let's go ahead and write the formula that can be used for this situation before we worry about how many would be left in eight hours. So we've got value over time. Our initial value is 600. And now for our multiplier. So the first thing I have to figure out is, is this being added or subtracted to 100? Always start at 100. The common mistake is using 18.5 or 0.185 as your multiplier. You always have to add to 100% or subtract from it. So in this situation, we have something that is decaying. So that means we are subtracting. So I need to go 100 minus 18.5, and that is 81.5. If I want to just think of pennies, that would be like 81 pennies. And I would just write my multiplier for 81 pennies. And now I just put the 5 on the end. Remember, the other ways to do that are to just move your decimal two spaces to the left or go 81.5 divided by 100. You also could have gone 1 minus 0.185 if you wanted to use that 1 minus r as a way to find your multiplier. And then this is exponential, and our time is the exponent. All right, so what am I finding? I'm finding how many grams are left in eight hours. So I'm going to find V of eight. So in my calculator, I'm going to go 0.815, hit my exponent button to the eighth power, and get my answer, which is like 0.1946 and some other stuff. I'm going to keep it in there and multiply it by 600. And my final answer is 116. And how many decimal places should we go? It makes sense that you could measure grams in decimal places. So when in doubt, I'm going to go three decimal places. So that would be 0.792 grams. Now, you might have chosen to just write 117 because you rounded to the nearest gram. You know, there's no definite right or wrong on what you choose on that. All right, here's our last problem. Go ahead and pause the video and give it a try, and then hit play to check your answer. So in this one, we have a mosquito population that's increasing. So I'll need to remember that when I find my multiplier. So I'm gonna stick with V over T, value over time, although you could easily call this P of T for population, or A of T for amount. Next up, I have my initial value, starting point of 2,000. And then for my multiplier, in my, in my head, I'm thinking 100 plus 7. That's 107 pennies. And on a price tag, that would be 1.07. And it's exponential. All right, so I'm going to find B of 15. I'm going to do my 1.07 on the calculator first to the 15th power. 
gives me like 2.759 and some other decimals, which I will multiply by 2,000. And I get a final answer of 5,518. I also have a 0 0.06 on the end of this. If I go 0 0.063, that would be to the nearest thousand. But the truth is, can we have a fraction of a mosquito in a population? Not really. So it makes sense that I would just leave it as 5,518 as a whole number, because that would be the number of mosquitoes that we would expect in 15 days. And that will conclude our video on solving exponential word problems that deal with growth and decay.